What's going on folks? Four Wheeler Doctor here again. Gonna be working on getting this little 680 Rencon motor back together. I took it off the bike and took it apart uh, a few videos back. I had to part for it for a little bit, but um, just now got around to getting the thing back together. Just want to kind of run through step by step on uh, what you need to do to get it back together. This one in this case, uh, it had been run under the water and had a bunch of uh, grit down in the bottom end uh, it wouldn't pull the, um, the uh, solenoids had mud and stuff in them um, actually it was sand almost like it was real gritty coarser than beach sand in in the bottom end started smoking a little bit uh, the crank actually is in good shape it doesn't have any play up and down you can see I'm actually pulling on it there but it's not moving they will move side to side which that doesn't matter you just really want to grab it and pull it Pull it straight up and straight down. If it has any play, uh, I suggest replacing them. Um, the bearings, uh, roller bearings in here wear out, and you just have to replace the whole crank. You can get a rod put in, but a lot of times by the time you pay for the rod and pay to get it put in, a crank's not a whole lot more. Just buying a whole brand new one. Um, I start off on these things. I got it all cleaned out. As you can see, uh, there's, there's nothing down in the bottom end there. Uh, using my little parts washer. Um, so I got, up, got all of the gritty stuff out. It's been sitting a little while here in the shop, so I went ahead and cleaned it out with some brake cleaner to make sure I got every little bit of stuff out of it. Also took the uh, a Scotch Bright wheel and, uh, and uh, hit that around the mating surface here. This doesn't have any gaskets on the on the uh, part here for the crankcase, so you just get that old RTV off, and that's what we'll be replacing back. Also rub that down good with uh, with your brake cleaner. And um, these, a couple of these, uh, well, actually, this is on the back half. They, a couple of them have little nipples here that are actually uh, oil passages. So you'll need to make sure you don't lose those and, uh, and keep those O-rings on them. Don't go real hard around those with the uh, scotch Bright wheeler. You can mess the O-ring up, and it'll, it'll cause more problems. So um, got, got them all cleaned up. Uh, really, the only other thing is this inner part of this bearing on the um, on the front cover will come out it'll fall out on the ground on you in a lot of times so you just make sure you hang on to that it goes in from the inside out um, also the make sure you pull this screen out I've had some of these before that are actually broke and uh, I'm not really sure how that happens there's nothing really can get in there to hit it or anything but uh, they've had them break you might want to replace those if it's broke because it doesn't really serve its purpose if it's got a hole in it and letting stuff still go through the motor. So that slides in right there. It actually has a little bevel on it. I don't know if you can see that in the picture, but the the skinnier side goes in first and it, it sits down in there perfect. Um, the other thing that needs to go in here is this pickup tube. Uh, it slides in like this and picks that oil up off the bottom. Uh, next item of business to put in here is the um, uh, transmission, the inner part uh, gears and all this stuff. So I'm going to, it, it's going to go in this back half. I'm going to uh, get those gears out of the box here and get them ready to go in and have it all set up here. I'll cut the, uh, cut the camera back on when I get ready to put those gears in. Guys, I'd also like to add, some of you might be um, uh, replacing your crank when you put one of these in if you have some play in it or whatever uh, in order to line this thing up I'll show you on mine I never pressed it out so it's it's not out of alignment but this is how you line it up you, have, you it works best if you put this thing in a press and press it out from the other side uh, but there's a, a tick mark you can kind of see it right there on the actual crankshaft and then down here on this balancer shaft there's two tick marks and those two tick marks need to line up um, on each side of this this mark uh, let me see if I can get in there to where you can actually see them a lot you can barely see them there um, and that's how you line it up if you don't have it lined up correctly the balancer shaft will actually hit the rod and all that stuff so and it'll shake like you had never seen a motor shake before so you want to make sure you get those lined up it's not too bad you can halfway start it pressing it in there keep these things lined up press them all in at one time uh, naturally if you miss it a tooth it's going to be pretty obvious and you can just press it out and do it again um, alright so I got my um, trusty manual out again well manuals uh, 
some stuff I've printed out online of various um, Honda motors that I put together from time to time. Uh, just the main stuff. Just make sure I don't leave anything out. I pretty much know how this goes back together, but uh, just in case I've got the uh, got the drawing here to help me out. But um, these are pretty much the only two parts that have to go back inside the crankcase before we seal it all up. Uh, this is your shaft that comes out, actually hooks to your hooks to your clutches on the front and this is your first and second gear clutches I mean I'm sorry second and third gear clutches uh, they're normally not ones that wear out I'm not going to replace them in this case because uh, this guy's he pretty much rides in the mud it doesn't do a whole lot of, of riding in uh, in second and third gear mostly a first gear bike so uh, I am going to replace the, the first gear ones but we're just going to leave these stocks stick them back in there I have cleaned this all up with brake cleaner and uh, so I'm going to stick them in uh, here in just a second I'll, I'll cut the camera back on um, in just a second but uh, let me about, I'm going to have to set this up on a stand because i got to hold this with two hands all right, guys, we'll try a little different camera angle here. See if I can get these two um, transmission pieces, this um, second and third gear, and the shaft that goes onto the, the first gears together. Get everything meshed together here. About have to put it all together where the teeth are all in. There is a washer here on this um, second and third gear shaft and slide them all down in get it lined up and it should slide right in there just like that and that's pretty much it on putting that in um, like I said before put the pickup in and this uh, and this screen I'm gonna probably take a little more brake cleaner and go around and just clean this mating surface real good clean this one real good because that's pretty much all it is to put this uh, bottom end back on here um, next next item is just uh, putting RTV around here so I'm gonna clean this up real good put some RTV on it and cut the camera back on right right before I stick the two halves together all right guys we got some uh, got this all cleaned up with some brake cleaner some uh, RTV put on this other half just I just use some gray this is actually some uh, high temp gray RTV silicone um, some some of them called super gray I got some perma permatex I think is what this stuff's made by ultra gray I mean the same stuff uh, it's very similar to what Honda uses to put these together and it's gray about the same color to K so it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb some people use them um, use that blue and all that stuff and that's just uh, it just it really stands out when you use different colors like that so I uh, got this just a, a very thin layer of RTV put around here these cases uh, they stick together pretty tight so uh, it'll squish some of this stuff out so you don't really need a whole whole lot to to um, put this together with uh, so now I've got the two cases here you do want to make sure you've got your two dowels there's a dowel here and the other dowel is on this side over here as well as this um, oil passage we talked about earlier make sure you have all three of those in place to put before you put this together then you start sliding over this uh, sleeve for that crankshaft probably gonna fall off if you happen to hear something clink but it doesn't really matter now because it's gonna fall onto the crankshaft if it does fall off and so you just kind of line it up you need to line your um, that oil pickup screen line that up in your hole there and then uh, everything else just kind of get it square it looks like it's close to going on just like that it was actually hung right there a little bit on that gear so you just wiggle it down and then it's actually uh, made it all the way up right now As you can see the sides are together so I'm gonna grab the uh, grab the bolts wherever my bolt card is and 
here's my bolts so now the easy part just start sticking it back together we'll start here on a rear crankcase actually we're not going to start on the rear crankcase because this is actually the front of the crankcase so we'll start on a front crankcase put these bolts in flip the thing around put the other bolts in and um, that front crankcase which we're looking at here you have uh, six bolts actually five bolts I'm sorry uh, one one over here two on the inside of this cover one around the side here and one down here and I'll cut the camera back on when I get ready to put the ones on the other side just to show you where those are all right so I got it flipped around this is actually the back side of the crankcase where the uh, the flywheel goes and on this side there's one two three four five six seven eight nine bolts uh, you've got two here one on the inside here one down here below and then five more over here one two three four five um, just like they're shown here on my cardboard so you stick those in um, I'm gonna go ahead and I just hit them real light with the impact uh, cordless impact and then I'll come back around and uh, and torque them down to that 10 Newton meters like I normally do on most of these um, uh, I don't know what that is eight millimeter six millimeter shank bolts so let me uh get these tightened in uh, torque down and then i'll cut the camera back on looks like um probably gonna do this rear end first this uh, or the the rear of the crankcase go ahead and put the the um stator on and uh the other secondary gears and all that stuff over here so i'll cut the camera on just a second all right guys got it flipped back around this is the rear of the crankcase i'm going to start putting some of these gears in um uh first things we need to put in is this uh gear selector here and this half moon piece that actually picks the gear it has a uh line on this gear selector and then on these teeth there are actually two little little divots I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but there's two divots right there, and that's where that line is supposed to hit, like that there, when you line everything up. Uh, I didn't, some people would take this arm off there again, I'm uh, under the impression I try to take off the least, the least amount of stuff that I can, or that I have to. So what I do is stick a screwdriver in there to just uh, fold that back stick this gear selector down in here like that right there then you can take this half moon piece and line that little notch up with the divots in the teeth and that's how it goes back together uh, just to kind of check it run it through its paces there this um, spring arm here should fall into the divots falls into that notch falls into that notch and that's as far as it goes and this thing here is bottomed out uh well pretty much bottomed out on this um uh, on this little stop here there's also a washer that goes on uh this piece as well so you'll make sure you want to make sure you put the washer back on there okay um next piece to put in it's probably going to be this part here this is uh again the gear selector this is a, a forward gear and reverse uh, as it slides back and forth uh, the splined part of this slides into this shaft or this end of these clutches here on those splines uh, it has washers on both ends so make sure you put the washers back in there just like I did keep it all together I, um, I try to keep mine in a cardboard box with a rag on it to keep stuff from moving around and uh works out pretty good for me so all right so that goes in there like that slides right in and bottoms out i hope this camera's not shaking around too much to make y'all dizzy over there all right next next item is uh is this shaft here this shaft here this one here actually is a gear reduction um, a big red gear reduction so it may look a little different than the one that you'll be putting in 
the ones that comes in the normal Rencons, these gears will actually come off both sides and in this case it'll only come off one side. So it slides in it slides in this hole here. You have to kind of back the shaft out in order to get it to slide under there. Uh, it again has washers on both sides. I'm sorry, that's the wrong way. It flips around the other way. The big gear goes on the top. So, it goes in like that. There again has washers on both sides. Uh, see the washer there and washer in my hand here. So, that slides in there like that. And then you get a washer on it. And then the next to the last item is the output shaft. Gear fell off of it. Uh, and this big washer here, that's an upgraded washer that comes with the, the big red reduction. Uh, this shaft here, you actually have to slide this gear under here, kind of wedged in there. Stick the shaft through the bearing, and it'll actually come all the way out the front side. Let me tilt this back so I can get everything lined up here. And then line the splines up on that shaft with that gear. Try to keep everything from falling. And that's how that goes in there. Move my prop hammer over here. And then the last item to go on that pertains to the gears here is the shift shaft and the shift fork. And what it goes is it slides in on this on this little slide piece here you just put the fork in there and normally the way these things work hopefully this will work out is there's a writing on this and the writing side I think it's probably the same either way but the writing side normally goes out it let, on some of the Hondas it actually has written front, center, rear uh, the ones that have multiple gears in them but this one here just only has the one shift shaft so it fits in there like that and then you slide the, slide the shaft in. Also you might want to make sure that that pin goes up into this groove here so when you select the gear it moves that um, that collar back and forth and that's actually what controls it uh, going into gear like right there that's neutral. Uh, I'm not sure if that's drive or, or reverse but one or the other and then this would be the other direction, drive or reverse that way. So you want to kick this thing back in uh, neutral because that's what we had to bike in neutral when we uh, started working on this and it'll help your uh, gear selector line up with this groove here. That's, that's going to be at a later date when we get ready to put that together. Okay, so this is all put on. I'm going to also put in the flywheel. What I like to do with these uh, start off with make sure you put that washer thick washer we pull that off we pulled everything down before it goes on first uh, this um, keyway if, if you're replacing the crank uh, the new crank will not come with the keyway so you have to knock this one out and knock the other one back in it's just a half moon shape or half moon shaped piece of piece of metal and uh, the actual flywheel has a uh, roller bearing goes inside of it. I usually like to slide that on there and then I also like to take some brake cleaner and clean up these mating surfaces because this is held on with friction um, so it, it helps to helps to keep the thing from ever spinning or shearing that keyway off. I've had them do that not on Rencons but I've had it happen before so uh, I like to shoot a little brake cleaner on that on that tapered part of that shaft and then shoot a little bit on inside the flywheel. I also want to clean this flywheel out. It actually has a little bit of grit in it so I'm going to cut the camera off, clean this out a little bit better and uh, I'll cut it back on right before I bolt it up. Alright and to get this flywheel on I got it cleaned all out in there. There's a groove right there to line up with the keyway. That's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you get it uh, get it lined up on there as you slide it down and it'll just slide right down like that. Uh, the other item that needs to go on there is this uh, reduction shaft, I guess you call it, for the for the starter. Um, I'll probably go ahead and stick that in there. 
the smaller gear goes toward the inside. Go ahead and stick that in there and um, clean this up with some brake cleaner and grab the next, I guess that'd be the middle cover that goes around this stuff and uh, get some RTV on it and get ready to bolt it on. I'm gonna, I'll am i get this cleaned up and get some RTV on. I'll cut the camera on right before I stick it together. All right, guys, got everything cleaned up. The couple things on this, uh, like I told you before, the getting this thing in the, in the neutral where it will spin free ensures that this is um, lined up straight up and down, and that actually lines up with this um, gear selector. I didn't take it out as, either, but um, it's there's a long side and a short side, and the long side should be facing down. Uh, we were lucky enough on this one not to mess this gasket up, so I'm just going to reuse it. If anybody's ever scraped one of these Honda gaskets off before, knows that uh, they're sealed up real well on one side, and they usually, I don't know what they use, some type of adhesive, um, but they don't put anything on the other side normally, and um, if it doesn't break, I just usually smear a little RTV around it just to make it seal up real well, stick it back on. Um, I will say from past experience, I did one of these gear reductions in a boy's bike one time that uh, he had actually taken apart and messed up, and the gasket was bad, and I did not have another gasket to put in it. The boy told me to go ahead and put it back together, so I did, and the thing will not crank if this gasket is not put back on. Uh, undoubtedly, there's such a tight tolerance on this rear end, or this rear cover going on, it binds up the starter gears, and it will not let it crank. So you have to put a gasket on here. Um, I didn't change this one, but it, that little bit of a of thickness of gasket makes the difference in letting this thing turn over. Actually, what I did was loosen these bolts up here on the back side where the starter runs through, and freed up this shaft and it would turn over then and end up having to take the bike back apart um boy didn't told me he'd pay me to to do it just because he had made the call to to put it together because i didn't have a gasket so i ordered a gasket and, and got one put on so uh just just to let you know try to learn from my mistakes because you might not uh live long enough to do them all yourself so um i'm gonna stick this back together got a uh, a number of bolts in here uh wherever it is I don't even see where the bolts are. Actually, they're on. They're in another cardboard. That's right. Um, I had one. I did so many of these gear reductions. I just made a uh, cardboard just for the for the gear reduction back cover. So all these bolts here are the ones that have to go in this back cover. I uh, also have to put a couple side cover brackets um, on the left side and the right side. And um, I'll stick this on there. Get these tightened up and show you the finished product here in just a second. Also, one other thing I'd like to note, do not force this thing on because if you, if your um, shift, shift selector there is not in the right position, it will break this, um, break this sensor in here. Uh, there again, speaking from experience, so um, just make sure you don't, if it doesn't want to go, pull it back apart and see what's making it, making it hang up but it should slide right together uh, when you get ready to put it together. So let me see how this is going to go. All right, folks, got the uh, back cover bolted up and I um, wanted to show you these brackets. This is what the bracket looks like that goes on this uh, little bit of left side back and then the bracket that goes on the right side back looks like this. Just make sure you put those in. Um, also, I had taken the O-ring off of here like I had mentioned in the teardown. Uh, make sure you put that back on. Uh, that was to keep from messing the gasket up when you, I mean the uh, seal up when you pulled it off. And I've got the reduction gear in here. The flywheel, I never uh, tightened it up on there. Uh, if you don't, I, I like to try to stick um, the pull start and bolt back in there and just tighten it down with the impact before I put the stator on. Because that stator is magnetized and I've had it before pull the flywheel off and you just it's just not lined up correctly if you uh, if you do let it pull off so I like to run this on there then back this off and put the uh, and then put the stator on um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that this stator uh, cover the gasket remained intact on it I just cleaned it up with some brake cleaner and got everything 
um, all the all the crud and all that cleaned out of it. Still a little bit of gasket material left, so I'm gonna take some RTV and smear around here. You also want to clean around this pickup here. Uh, it's magnetized as well, and it'll get little metal shavings and all that on it. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, still got to put the drain plug in over here. I'm not real sure where it is. I, it's in the bottom of my tote over there, so I've got to uh, get down there and get it. And I'm also going to put this uh, fill tube on for the oil. Uh, it's got an O-ring on the end of it. You'll want to put a little bit of oil on it so it slides in there. <coughs> and it fits in just like this. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. And then this little wire clips in this hole here. So I'll get all that put together. And I may cut the camera on right before I uh, slide the stator back on. All right, I got a light layer of, uh, or a thin layer of RTV put around that. Uh, you also want to make sure you don't go real heavy on this hole here. It actually has a um, uh, an oil tube here to let oil run through the through the motor. It's got this thing's got oil passage all over it. Uh, it also has a this rear cover has a um, collar here, alignment pin, and. I don't even know where the other one is, so I'll have to find it and stick it on the back side because it looks like it's missing. So I had some of those on my on my board here. That's probably where one of those come from. So um, slide out, slide the alignment pin in there, get it to slide on, and uh, and and stick the bolts in it. Also, I almost forgot. Uh, still got to put this gear reduction in here. Um, before you put this rear cover on it just slides onto this shaft here you have to kind of get it get it all lined up together because the it has to line up on these gears and line up on the gears of the starter there so it just snaps in there like that and then with your real light coat of, uh, of RTV on here it slides right on so stick the bolts in uh, the only difference with this cover and, and all the other covers is the bolts. That's the wrong bolt. The bolts that uh, go in it. The ones that are on the inside here where the pull start is, these actually have a, a copper washer on them. So make sure those go back in the same location. Uh, gotten got enough four of those with the washers. And then you got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bolts total. Uh, these do vary in length. These two top ones here are very long. The and then the ones around the where the starter actually goes in are a, are a good bit shorter. So so long, long, long. These two are short. That one's fairly short, and these all have washers on them. So let me get those tightened up, and also I'm going to slide this starter in. Um, what I like to do with the starters, it's got the o-ring on the end of them, put just a little bit of oil around it so it'll slide in the hole a little easier and slide it down in there like that. Sorry, got real close on that camera angle. Slide it in there like that and just wiggle it, twist it as you push it in and it'll go in like that and um, there's actually a bracket that bolts in here as well has a little hoop on it for the um, coolant line so I'll have to get that and, and bolt that on but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up and I'll get the bracket and stick it on here and I'll show you that when I get it all bolted up alright guys we'll go ahead and stick this piston in here um, this like I said before this thing was smoking a little bit when I got it it really doesn't look real real bad but if I'm going this deep in one to clean everything out of it I may as well go ahead and get it bored out uh, it didn't have any scars or anything in the cylinder so I just opted for the 25 over as you see stamped in the top of the piston there um, just to give you a that's a, a quarter of a millimeter just to give you a little perspective it's almost not even enough to see there's just barely even a little line right there around the piston um, so it's it's not like I say a quarter of a millimeter it's not really gonna make any difference in power per se like boring one out you know it's not gonna make it a, 
a 690 or nothing like that but it what it does is just cleans the cylinder walls up and you have a new piston new rings pretty much you'll have go back to stock compression um, to where this thing already had some wear on it like I say the rings were definitely uh, getting worn enough to where they were uh, they were smoking some you can see on this uh, on this wrist pin here it actually has a little bit of scarring on it where it looked like some sand may have gotten in it or it got hot or something so what I have to do is got a brand new piston here from from uh, Honda this is like I said I oversized put these uh, snap rings in it so um, I'm going to uh flip it around this way it is marked with the end that's the intake side which in this case is the back side of the motor uh so i usually stick the it doesn't really matter which side you go but this just the way i've got the motor laid in there it'll be a little easier to go this way just stick this ring in there and you kind of just have to wedge it around with a with a small screwdriver and uh, make sure it's seated in there good and then stick your uh, piston pin new piston pin shoot a little oil on it slide it through there and let's stick the other pin on the other side what I like to do to try to keep sometimes these things will fly off try to keep it from going down into the motor is you shove a rag down into the um, where the cylinder will go just to keep it from flying down in there because if it gets down in there, there's a chance you might not get it out so I'll uh, I'll get this get this in there and right before I stick it in the other side I'll cut the camera back on all right, folks. I got the uh, the pin stuck in there on. Well, I got the clip stuck in here on the back side. Whoa, camera! On the back side, and the pin stuck through. Now I just have to stick the other other clip in. I like to do these from the bottom first. Just makes it a little easier to kind of wedge it in there. You want to make sure you about keep your finger on it at all times to keep the thing from flying out. Because if it to fly across the shop it uh you might not ever find it and uh so it just snapped right in there I, I like to take and catch the end of it with a screwdriver to try to rotate it around to make sure it's seated down in the in the groove good but um that's pretty much it on putting the piston in um not gonna get the cylinder cleaned up for it tonight so i may uh next thing i may try to do is um is rebuild this oil pump for it so let me uh, let me get started on that, and I'll cut the camera back on when I get everything over here. Guys, I also found my drain bolt. Uh, make sure that O-ring's still on there, as well as this uh, washer before you put it in. And uh, it's supposed to be torqued down to like uh, 18 foot pounds, so just tighten that thing up. All right, folks, this is the oil pump. We'll take this thing apart. It's got uh, three different sections to it. They're all actually the same gears in there. Um, to get this thing out apart, you need to take these two. 10 millimeter uh, bolts off and uh, come out pretty easy. Alright, so you get those out and then this thing starts coming apart kind of in pieces. See your top cover comes off. You can see the nasty in there. That's actually kind of silty sand. Uh, so I'll clean up each section as I go and then I purchased um, these are actually the oil pump some people call them gears rotors whatever you want to call them um, so there's two of those an inner and an outer and a pin that lets them rotate there's uh, two of those on each one so you got one or a pair here pair here pair here for for six pair total I'm sorry three pair total and uh, I ordered all these. They're actually all the same in this case, uh, as far as the, all three of them. So I've got three inners and three outers. So I'm going to tear these down, clean this up as I take it apart, and I'll cut the camera back on once I um, once I get ready to put it all back together. And just to show you, it's pretty redundant. About the same, about the same as you go up and down. Uh, in order to get one section apart, and you, as you you come to the first section like that just came apart in order to get the second section you have to pull that pin out and then the next section will slide apart and then do the same thing as you as you keep going down uh, there's actually a dowel in there is too I think it goes in there so anyway I'll uh, I'll get this thing tore down cleaned up and get ready to put it back together and uh, and show you how to put it all back together all right guys see if I can show you how all this goes back together 
it's best to start with the the outer outer shell this is the one that's closest to the front of the four-wheeler um, and also to get this shaft out I, I didn't say this last time but to get this shaft out of, of this outer shell it actually has a bolt in it you have to take that bolt out to get this last the last um, of the gears off of the of the oil pump shaft so okay got that let me grab one of these new ones grab an inner and an outer and you can lay them in I'm not real sure what the difference makes but uh, there's a, a divot on each of these and I always tried to line the divots up at least put the divots on the same side this shaft here I mean this gear here will only go in there one way uh, because of the way this shaft goes in with the pin so you stick that inner inner uh, rotor in there like that and then so that puts the divot on the bottom so I'm going to stick this one over so the divots on the bottom like I said I'm not real sure if that makes a difference because they look identical um, top and bottom okay so that's the second piece that goes in I mean the first piece I'm sorry the outer outer piece uh, then the next piece would be this one with the it's got a relief valve on it slide it right together like that and then you need another gear inner and outer And you have to put a pin in there as well. So you put slide the pin in first, then put the inner gear on. Spin it around until it lines up. And then the outer gear. Like that. this will be your next piece it's got this sleeve here on it have to figure out which direction it goes it goes on like that right there you gotta kind of get your your oil pump gears lined up before they'll actually fit in the hole there you go go in there like that into the hole and then everything goes together like that all right so then you take one more set of inner and outer gears oh sorry about that hit the camera with my hand okay there's your outer there's your inner grab a pin slide the pin through the shaft put the inner gear on first so spin it till it lines up and then the outer gear on second and I'm gonna have to clean this one up I, I missed it when I was cleaning stuff up so let me clean that up there's also these pins here that help everything line up uh, one goes in here gets all of these lined up together and then another one goes in here lines all of these pieces up at one time um, and also I did it uh, off camera I went ahead and replaced these uh, these o-rings on these sleeves you can slide these sleeves out and there's an o-ring here two two o-rings per sleeve so I've got those replaced as well as replace the ones on here um, so let me clean this up and then I'll bolt this all back together all right guys I got the <clears throat> oil pump gears all put back together bolt stuck in those uh, clean or replace these o-rings on the outside also put a dab of um, of Loctite on this bolt here uh, to Help hold it on it had Loctite on it before So now let's put the oil pump on I Bought a new oil pump chain and The other one was pretty bad loose. So I figured while well, I was going this far I may as well replace the thing so what you do on it is you put the chain on the sprocket for the oil pump first slide it over the 
be the back um, set of teeth gears on the crankshaft you got to kind of hold your mouth right to get all this to go together so go like that let that get on those gears there's no kind of alignment or anything like you have to do with uh, with the uh, cam chain just pretty much goes on there and wiggle it around you want to make sure you get this shaft lined up with that <clears throat> that's actually the end of your pickup tube and just press that thing on there kind of slow just like that and it seats all the way up you see there's no crack well there's no crack down in there <clears throat> so now um you get some bolts here on my cardboard oil pump bolts there's three of those go in there go in there and go in there <clears throat> tighten those down and then we'll be ready to <clears throat> do something else i think i may uh i think i may clean the valves up and do the uh, valve seals next so i'll cut the camera back on in just a second all right, guys. I'm gonna try to go ahead and uh, replace these first first gear clutches on this bike. This is the clutch pack here. I've got the bolt and washer zip tied, so I didn't lose them after the took the bike apart. Uh, what you want to do first? Probably pull this center piece out here. There's also a washer right there below it. Put that out. Sit those to the side. I'll need that a little bit later. And then what what you have to do to get this thing apart is there is a little snap ring all the way around this thing. And it makes it a little easier if you take a little pressure off of it. I like to use a, a pair of uh, vice grips and clamp down on this piece and then clamp to the back side there. And it'll get just a little bit of pressure off of that snap ring. And make it come out of there a little bit easier it's not a um, conventional snap ring which has the holes in it holes in the end of it to use your snap ring pliers you just have to pry this one off and so you start right here by the crack and there's actually a little little relief in there and uh, sometimes it takes a couple screwdrivers to get this thing out and started so you just work your way around getting that snap ring out this has actually got grit in here like I said just work it around I almost got it all the way out here now right there all right and there's your snap ring out and then take your vice grips off and then your clutches will start coming apart this top band here is pretty thick oh, you can actually hear the hear the grit inside of it clean that off it doesn't look like it's scarred up real bad but there's so this guy rides in the mud a lot so I figured I'd go ahead and change these out it's probably not going to hurt anything if anything it'll make it make it pull back like it was factory so I've got the three clutch actual clutch discs and the three these are the um, back washers I guess you'd say spacers that go in the in the clutch in between the clutch discs uh, open up all of these these are all Honda. Uh, there's the part number if you need it. This is for a 2013 680. And cut all these open. Alright, so now we start taking this thing apart. The clutch disc will be the last part that you'll need to 
put back on. These are both the same front and back. And so it just alternates as it goes down. So you got a clutch disc, then you got a washer. Really and truly, there's pro you probably wouldn't get a whole lot of wear on these washers, but I figure if you're going to go ahead and replace the clutch disc and get a whole fresh um, wearing surface on those, you might as well replace the washers too. So you got a, a clutch disc, washer, clutch disc, washer. And then a final clutch disc. Got a little bit of a suction on it. Okay. And then there's uh, one final washer down in here. Just going to clean that out. Also, I'm going to cut the camera off for a second. I'm going to spray all this out with some brake cleaner. Sorry about that guys, I didn't get that last washer out. There's one more washer in there, and there's a little, it almost looks like a snap ring inside of here. It will fall out on you. So go ahead and pull that out, and then uh, spray all that out with brake cleaner just to get it, all the grit and grime. You can actually see some sandy looking stuff down in those cracks. So let me get all that out, and then I'll uh, start putting it back together. All right guys, got it all cleaned up now. We'll start sticking this thing back together. First thing to go on is this little uh, inner snap ring, I guess you could call that. And then the first other piece needs to go on is one of the metal plates. So they need to come wrapped up in some stuff so they don't rust. And that slides down in there in those grooves. Next item. Is a clutch disc, and that just slides down. And then you just keep doing this until you use up all you got. Three discs, three clutch discs, and three metal plates. Got me the trash can nearby so you can uh, throw all this trash away. Alright, so that's it. It for the metal plates. And the last of the clutch discs. And what you want to do with these clutch discs, uh, just take this washer out of this uh, uh, geared piece. You got to line those things up. Stick, Go ahead and stick that thing in there and try to get it lined up on those uh, teeth. Just keep rotating it around until it goes through all three. Then you can um, actually can slide that back off because you need to put this last thick plate on here. Slide it down in there like that. And last but not least is this other snap ring. Clean all the crud off of it. You can slide this, um, that gear and that washer back on there before you get all get any pressure on it because it might not let those clutches spin very freely. And then snap this thing back together it actually doesn't have a whole lot of pressure on it now it's got a lot of the crud and all that out of it so you can just about do it by hand and except for the very last part there you go it snaps out and you just make sure everything's it's it's snapped all the way up in your groove all the way around got your washer in there that's pretty much it for that more um, zip tie this back together because I still have to uh, do the head valves and all that on this so I'm going to stick this back in my parts box and uh, I'll uh, I'll get the cylinder head over here and 
and uh, start on the valves on it. And I'll cut the camera back on in a second. All right, guys, I'm back on this head for this 680 Rincon. I cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, Scotch Bright wheel on my little roto tool there. Got all the little bit of gasket material that was left on there. I'm going to clean it again one time with some brake cleaner to get the rest of the residue off. Also took a little wire brush and hit the top of those valves. <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do now is take the valve seals or replace the valve seals. Also like to lap the valves on these. I'm just going to do one of them. They're all the same. So uh, I'll show you how to do one and, and uh, y'all can figure it out on the other three. But uh, I've got, there's numerous ways to do this. And I think you can rent one of these tools, but I've got this thing here. It's a uh, valve spring compressor. It's actually made for automotive applications. It's like a big, huge C-clamp. And uh, it works great. I do a lot of these, so I um, ended up breaking down and buying one of these. About 50 bucks or so like that what I, is what I um, paid for it, I believe. But I've had it for quite a while, so things that may have went up or went down for that matter. What you do, see if I can get this thing in the camera here, is you have one piece here that pushes on the bottom of the valve and then this thing, fork thing here, pushes on the retainers on the top. And so you snap it in there. Let me show you here. Snap it in there like that and you see the bottom's pushing on the bottom of the valve. This is gonna be an exhaust valve I'm gonna take out and press it down let me loosen it up this thing will actually kind of lock when it when it gets down to where it's compressed and uh, you don't want to really over compress these valve springs just enough to get the keepers out all right so there you go now you got keepers in here these are two little triangle wedge, wedge shaped pieces they come out Get both of those, there's two of them. And then you let the pressure off the valve. Set the valve spring compressor down. And then you've got the cap. I like to keep all this together. This uh, 680 actually has two springs in it, a smaller one and a bigger one. Keep all those together, usually flip them upside, on, upside down on the workbench. Then you can just push the valve out. And it's got a, a little bit of crud on it. I'll take the wire brush and go around that, clean that up as well as clean the bottom of it up a little bit more. And then your valve seal is right here. And you can just take a screwdriver. It's a rubber seal. You can just take a screwdriver and pry that thing up and uh, to get it off. And then you'll pry a new one on. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna clean this uh, valve up a little bit. And I'll cut the camera back on. I can't get that off right there, but not with one hand at least. But I'll uh, I'll cut the camera back on when I get ready to lap the valve to show you how that's done. All right, I got the valve cleaned up a little bit with the wire brush. Now I'm going to lap it. And uh, what I use is uh, this is some stuff from Permatex Valve Grinding Compound. It's kind of like uh, I don't know gritty uh, kind of kind of slimy like stuff. I'm not real sure to describe the consistency, but it's a water-based grinding compound. And um, you just put a little bit of right, right around the edge of the valve like that and stick it back in the valve guide so it goes all the way to the bottom. And then I've got this tool here. Some people take a, um, a, a drill and clamp it on the back side of the valve here and move the drill back and forth as they grind. I just use this little thing here. This is actually made for lapping valves. It's a, a wooden handle with two suction cups. Um, this comes as like a set from Advance or AutoZone parts place or whatever that um, have two different size suction cups on on another set of these. So you just you just push this down on there like that and then work it like you're trying to start a fire. And you can move this in and out a little bit and it actually will will put more valve grinding compound in the in the crack there to help it grind a little bit more 
as you pull it up you can feel it's a little more a little more gritty than the time before you did it and what you're trying to do here is just kind of clean this uh, mating surface up then you take your valve back out and wipe this off and wipe it off of the head and you can actually see on here that kind of shiny gray line that's where it cleaned it up it doesn't appear what you'll have sometimes these valves will get bent for various reasons piston hit them or whatever this one here's got the same line it stays consistent all the way around it looks like it's pretty wide so I don't see this having a problem sealing up same thing with the um, with the seat there it looks good so that valve is um, is lapped and should be should seal up good once we get it back together so now your next item is to put the actual valve seal on uh, got those from Honda as well the part number there it is and uh, it's just a rubber little cap uh, all you do with it is just push it down over that guide got a little uh, ring around it kind of acts like a spring stick your valve back in there put your spring back on then pretty much the reverse of, uh, of taking it off you get your compressor again Presser back on it now. Press it down. Then, then you're ready to put your. Uh, see if I can see this. Put your put your guides back in. The guide has a tapered end, real real skinny part of it. Part of it that's supposed to go in first toward the bottom. You put one on one side of the valve. Put one on the other side, and it locks into a little groove as you as you back it off see those it locks into that little groove there as you back it off the retainers will snap into that groove and then that's it what I like to do also is um, when I get it get it back in there just to make sure it's seated up good take a hammer and tap the tap the end of that valve just to make sure those keepers are set down as far as they need to go all right then then now you just uh, do that three more times I do need to clean inside of here there's a little bit of crud in the in the valley there so let me go ahead and get those other three done and I'll uh, cut the camera back on in just a second all right guys got the head finished up uh, valves cleaned and new seals and all that put on uh, now I'm gonna start putting a few more things in this front end here I'm gonna try to get everything in here together or pretty much together um, before I put the head on the next thing I got to put in here got the oil pump in down here on the bottom as you can see um, the oil pump chain as well is the uh, cam chain I got a new one of those uh, I think I just tore the bag up across the part number but anyway it's a uh, 144018HN8A61 and uh, the way you do this thing you have to feed it up from the bottom it doesn't matter where it goes on here now um, you'll mess with the timing later but feed this thing up through this slot here with the cam chain guides are and get it around the gear kind of like that and what I like to do is take a piece of wire and attach it to the top of it up here just so you have something to hold on to because if this cam chain falls down in there while you're working on the top end up here and all this it can be bad it can be to where you can't get it out uh, you see it kind of loosened up on the chain what I usually do when I get ready to put this top end on is uh, make sure that's pulled up tight and keep it tight until I get the cam in to hold the cam up or hold the chain up I mean alright so next thing I'm going to take uh, get a few of these parts internal front cover parts put on uh, clutches 
got those finished up and um, torque converter and all that stuff. So let me grab those parts and then we'll stick those on. All right, guys, got the torque clutch and torque converter here. Uh, I'm gonna put this. Uh, this is for the first gear clutches. Stick it on here first. Just want to make sure that you still have your washer stuck inside of there that we had taken out to um, to put our clutches in, and also that this uh, gear here is meshed up with all the little teeth on the clutches. Make sure it's sitting all the way down on there. And this thing here goes on this shaft. It also has a washer and a nut that holds it on. So you just slide that thing on there. Kind of have to wiggle it around. It does have some splines that it has to match up with. Camera's tilting over here. I'm not real sure what my camera's doing here. Okay. Don't think the splines are lining up. Change positions here. splines just aren't lining up right now take it off and rotate it and stick it back on see if I can get them to line up you got all kind of um, things to line up here you got splines here and then there's splines on the back side there too that all have to line up there it goes it lined up then there's also a couple o-rings on this thing that, um, that also have to line up So it does have a little bit of pressure as it goes on. There you go. It'll bottom out. You get about a, uh, maybe a little over a quarter of an inch of thread sticking out there. Put your washer on there and then your nut. And uh, that nut is actually staked on. It's about, uh, I don't really know what size it is. Maybe a 24 millimeter. Yes. So. We'll tighten that down and then also we need to do this torque converter and to get the torque converter on got it uh zip tied together as well keep from losing the nut and washer so with this thing you have to got this little plate on the back of it and it's got that notch in it right there that notch has to line up with this pin that's right get it back over here on this other perspective this pin that's right here if you can see that there's a pin there line up with this notch so what you do is you just slide one this thing, thing over and close you need to put this other cam chain guide in before you tighten up this torque converter it goes in this little thing here and there's a tab right there that will hold it in and you can't get it in there unless you um, don't have the torque converter tightened down so it slides in there like that and it kind of holds the uh, holds the cam chain guide in. But once the torque converter is back, you can't get that guide in there. So make sure you put that in before you tighten up your torque converter. And then once you get so far in, you're going to have to get your, get your teeth meshed up and that notch lined up. And once all that happens, see we've got our teeth meshed up. I don't see if you, I don't know if you can see that notch down there or not, but it's it's in the hole too. Then your torque converter's on. It needs to be set down on there just a little bit more. And I think that's bottomed out. And then we've got a washer and a nut for it as well. So we'll get both of those tightened up. That one is a little bit bigger than 24. I'm guessing 27. Yes, 27 uh, millimeter. So uh, I'm gonna tighten those down. Actually, I think this is the one here that bottoms out. So we may have to use a uh, another socket once this thing gets pressed all the way on there because it's gonna be deeper than my regular socket here. So 
let me get those uh, tightened up and then you'll want to go back and stake both of those nuts in that um, in that little groove there to keep those from backing off so I'm gonna get those tightened up and um, we'll go to the probably front cover is gonna be the next thing we put on alright guys so I got a little thin layer of RTV put on this front cover here we'll slide this back on uh, we'll say on this um, nut here that 27 millimeter regular socket I had wasn't quite deep enough so I used an inch and a sixteenth three quarter inch drive which uh, made it a little deeper so I got it on there uh, also you'd want to take and put some oil on these o-rings here coming out of this oil pump just so it'll slide back into these holes on the front cover a little easier now some of the manuals talk about removing this uh, excuse me uh, removing this oil tube I just leave it in. Um, it, I'm like I say, I'm under the mentality is the less I have to take off, the less I have to put back on. So you just got to line all these things up. The main thing is your um, your output shaft. You line up that oil tube into a hole that runs through the crankcase. And I'm probably gonna have to tap this thing on there because I remembered when I took it apart, this uh, bearing on this uh, output shaft was kind of tight. I did also put a little bit of oil around it to help it slide down. I think that did it. So there you go. It uh, it slid right on there. I got it. Like I told before about the thin layer of RTV. It's actually not even mashed all the way up, but you can see it's already starting to squish some out. And that's plenty enough RTV just to smear it down with your hand. Let me get all these bolts put back in, and then I'll start. I'll put this um, shift. Uh, valve back in here and may go ahead and stick the water pump on and definitely got to stick an oil filter in this thing and then we'll be ready to do the top end alright cut the camera back on in a little bit alright guys we got the valve body ready to go back in it's all cleaned up had a video in our little part of my other video that uh, showed me taking this apart and what was inside and kind of explained the cleaning process it's a uh, just pretty much spray everything out with brake cleaner. You want to get all the little passages and all that cleaned out on it. Uh, this does have a gasket that goes over the front of it here, so you want to make make sure you want to put that back on. Uh, and it just slides over. There's a uh, there's six bolts that hold it all on, and then the, also the shift solenoid is uh, needs to go on there next. And there's four bolts that hold it on. Had just a little bit of crud in there. So I'm gonna grab the uh, grab the shift solenoid, stick this bit, six bolts in, and and uh, and bolt this all together. And the front end will be pretty much done. Still got to put the uh, water pump on. I may do that before I flip it all around, but I'm not sure. So I'll cut the camera back on in a minute. Um, we still got to put an oil filter in this thing too, so don't forget to do that. I think everybody knows how to put an oil filter in one, so I probably won't show it that on video. But we'll put this water pump in, and then we'll start on the top end. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and stick this water pump on there. I left the hoses and everything attached. What the main thing you want to do on this is make sure this O-ring's in there, because that's actually what seals up the oil from coming out. Put some a little uh, bit of oil on it to to keep it. Uh, or let it slide in and then this this groove here has to line up with the groove in here that's on the water pump shaft I mean an oil pump shaft so if you don't have this pump completely apart you can't really rotate it except from the shaft in and uh, so you want to kind of halfway get it lined up before you stick it in there just so you won't have to take it back apart and realign it and uh, Sometimes I'm not really all that lucky with this, but we'll give it a shot like that. And yep, this time the stars were all aligned and I was lucky. So I got it in there and then there's only two bolts to hold that water pump in. That'll seat it up on there and we'll hook these uh, other lines up once we get the get the head and all that put back on so uh, I'll go ahead and tighten these up then I'm gonna also you want to knock these in there these are the uh, motor mount bumpers I guess you'd say 
bushings uh, they go in these holes on the bottoms each side of the motor mount and uh, you just slide it in there you can about push these in with your hand as I did with that one slide it in and push these in that's uh that's something easy to do while it's outside the four wheeler here but once you get it on there it's a little tougher to get on so all right well bolt, tight these up and then we'll start on the top end all right guys so I got the cylinder washed up with some uh, Dawn dish soap and uh, warm water and now I usually take some transmission fluid and clean this thing out with a rag just wipe it in and out of there and what you're trying to do there is get the um, get the uh, grit from the uh, boring process get that out because it will actually grind the cylinder out and, and wear it out prematurely so let me get that cleaned up all right guys I've already cleaned the cylinder out with uh, with some Dawn dish detergent and just to show you how much more grit is left in there uh, you can see how this was red from the transmission fluid but the black in it that's from the additional grit that's in here and you just want to keep cleaning this out with transmission fluid until you get a clean rag out or a red rag because of the uh, of the fluid and um, that should I don't know how much difference it makes but I think it does make a difference that keeps that from getting ground back into these grooves that are cut in after it's honed and uh, would make the rings last a whole lot longer so let me get this cleaned up and then we'll get ready to I'm stick it back this, on um, um cylinder out with what with fluid trans transmission fluid and um we got some four wheelers outside and we're going to work on them in a minute see you later all right guys just give you a little comparison of what the rag looks like you see where this is pretty dark over on this side and it got a lot redder as i went across so we got it clean this thing cleaned up now and now we're going to stick the piston rings on the piston here and uh, I'll cut the camera back on soon to get these things opened up and show you at least how I put them on. Alright guys, here's the rings. Um, what I'm going to start off with is this, this oil ring here. So I think it's called a scraper or something like that. So I'm going to stick it on. And the way I normally try to do these is to put this one to where the crack is right here and what my plan is to put the crack here on this one then these smaller rings go on the top and the bottom of that oil scraper these are also oil rings if I can get them up and what I usually do with those is put one of them here the crack for it and one of them here and then I'll take the next ring which is the second to the top it actually in this case is stamped with a RN it's a darker colored ring these here also have a 25 stamped on them showing that they're 25 millimeters I mean a quarter of a millimeter over just like this here and so I'll take this second ring and put it in this same location as that oil ring was right there and then the last ring the same location talking about the crack the top ring I'll put it completely opposite biggest I don't really know if it makes that much difference where you actually orient these things but I do know that you don't want them to line up and this way it really takes something to get them to line up because they're completely like 180 degrees off so that should make it where they never line up all right let me get these on might cut the camera back on just to show you the finished product all right guys here's the finished product you see that top rings right here crack the second ring crack is right there then the oil ring if you can see that it's right here the scraper ring and then you got one oil ring here and one oil ring here and that way they'll all be separate um, never never get lined up so what I'm gonna do now is put a little bit of oil in this cylinder and start sliding it over the top here you also don't want to forget your gasket this does have a gasket that fits over um, kind of like that base gasket uh, so put that on and make sure your dowels are in these two pins slide your cylinder on uh, pretty much I don't there's not really an easy way to do this um, I start with the top ring with the put the cylinder down on there and just get a real small screwdriver push in on the ring until it slides down you know sl slightly bump on the um, 
on the cylinder on the cylinder there to get it to come on down just just uh, keep tapping it keep working the rings down and they'll eventually um, they'll all go up into the cylinder alright guys got the cylinder down on there uh, it's a little tricky fishing this uh, cam chain guide up through the hole while you're getting everything down on but uh, I got it done it's just a little aggravating but it can be done so now I gotta put these three bolts in the bottom here I'm going to get the cam bolted down and then we'll be about ready to put the head on. Also going to hook this uh, coolant line up here and the one on the other side won't get put on until the head goes on. Alright, I'll cut the camera back on once I get everything ready to go back, at least the cam on. Alright folks, I got all the bolts in here, torqued down 10 newton meters, got the chain still up there tight. And now I need to get this thing at top dead center, so take the timing cover hole out and rotate the crankshaft here you need to rotate it that'll be clockwise until you get to the T mark that's in the hole here see if I can I'm not really sure if you can be able to see that let me just get it right around there to the T and what uh, what you want to do sometimes is hold up on this cam chain here too just so that it uh, doesn't come off the gear down there and it uh, doesn't get any slack in it or anything while you're turning this uh, crankshaft over all right let me see if I can get it I might have, to have two hands to do this so let me see if I can get it a uh, top dead center and then I'll um, I'll show you what to do next all right guys so I got the T T mark in there I don't know if you can see that or not well I know you can't see the T but there's the line and it's got a T right above it you just need to center that up in this hole it actually needs to go down just a hair like that you can see the you can see the line right there all right so that's at top dead center also you know your, your piston will be at the top too so let me zoom this baby out all right so now we're going to need to get the cam chain i mean cam well chain too but the cam on there get this uh camera set up so maybe it can record me okay and then uh, our cam in this case has this little tray that it sits in and so you put that in there it goes kind of like that and then your actual cam has a two dowels here and here make sure they, they're still in there and it sits down in this tray like this right here and you know what I got the tray in there in the wrong direction Turn the tray back around. That's how it actually goes. So the high side of the tray goes toward the piston, and you can see those little dowels stick out, stick out here. So sit the tray down in there. The dowels line up, and what you're wanting to do is line this. There's a a line right there on the bottom of the cam chain uh, on the cam got cam gear. You want to have that lined up with this, and put the cam chain on all right so uh, what you need to do still got my cam chain pulled up here tight you can finally take this wire off of it you have to do in some of these cases this is a new chain so it might be kind of tight getting on here you have to you may have to tilt this uh, the cam up on its edge just to get it to feed over like that right there just like that and what I like to do, it's on, it's on line there. See the line there? It's pretty much lined up right. What I also like to do is push in here where the tensioner will go. Actually, it's off just a hair, but as you push down, it, it lines everything up. So it looks like when I put all this back together that the, uh, that the time is going to be correct. So I'll stick these four bolts in here and then also go ahead and stick the tensioner in. And... Then we'll be ready to put the head on. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna get this tensioner put in there. Um, I took the little eight millimeter bolt out of the end of it here. And how you do it, these things are spring loaded, uh, automatic, and um, you can have take a screwdriver and turn it off in there. But the way it's supposed to work is there's little notches that you can turn and then lock a lock a tool in there to hold it. And uh, I just made this out of just a little piece of aluminum just because I could cut it easy with some uh, tin snips 
but you stick it in there works like a screwdriver you, you turn it in until uh, you can see this thing's actually the plunger is actually going in so you um, so you run it in as far as it will go and then once you get all the way with it all the way back then you uh, press press this down and it will lock lock the tool in there there's some little grooves in it right there it'll lock the tool in there and it won't spring out until you pull it back out and uh, so that's what I'm going to do put a little bit of RTV around here and bolt this up and then the cam chain will be tensioned alright guys I got the head cleaned up on this thing put some um, copper seal on the head gasket this is the old head gasket uh, just reuse those because it not been up or didn't like it was leaking anywhere so copper sealed it gonna bolt it on here um, the uh, the cylinder here has the I'm sorry has the um, two dials here that has to go back on and then you can just sit the head back on it so we've already got the tensioner hooked up the cams tight so it's ready to ready for the head Let me, uh, see if I can lay it on there while I'm videoing That's it. I'm gonna go ahead and stick uh, stick these bolts in here, and then we'll have to put the um, the rocker arms on there before we can tighten down the actual head bolts. Also, you need to put the lifter cups in and the lifter rods and the gasket. But uh, let me get these tightened up, and then I'll show you putting the rest of the stuff in. All right, guys, got the uh, gasket on here, the lifter caps the rocker I mean the um, push rods and now I just got to put the uh, put the head on so just bolt that on and that'll be it alright guys I got the uh, the head tightened up here uh, these are 41 foot pounds is what the uh, torque is supposed to be on it let me give you the metric, metric measurement on that as well it's uh, 55 newton meters so tighten those down. You also want to go around and tighten up all these eight millimeter bolts again, because when you pull that down, it loosens these up naturally around here too. So go ahead and tighten up all those. And then now it's at top dead center. See both of the valves are loose now. So we want to go and uh, and adjust those valves. So uh, we valve clearance on these is um, 0.15 on the intake and 0.33 on the exhaust. And six thousandths and thirteen thousand so we're gonna get those uh get those tightened up and then put the valve covers back on and that'll be pretty much it i probably put these on and put the um timing adjusting hole you might want to make sure that's still at, at top dead center before you adjust the valves and then bolt up the pull start and that'll be pretty much it until we can put the uh get the bike over here and put the put the motor back on up here all right, guys. I'm gonna show you how to adjust these valves on this thing. Um, the exhaust valves are for, are supposed to be at uh, 0.33. Riker, Lord have mercy. Excuse my son. Uh, so um, just stick it in there. This actually got a little bit of play in it. So what you want to do is uh, break that 10 millimeter nut loose and take a screwdriver, flat screwdriver, and tighten down on that adjuster until it gets kind of snug onto your filler gauge I usually just leave the filler gauge in there it's pretty snug now and then tighten up that um, that 10 millimeter nut and then check it one more time it should just have just a little bit of drag on it and that one does so we'll do, do the uh, the other one as well like I said just tighten it down till it, till it snugs up about like that and then uh, tighten the 10 millimeter nut up all right same thing with the intake valves it's just a different um, filler gauge you use so that's pretty much it like I said I don't think I'm gonna put a video on there of uh, how to put this motor back on you can watch my other one and kind of figure out how to take it off and should be able to figure out how to put it back on so um, all right like my video subscribe see you later see you later guys <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.